Hello and welcome to this episode of the Connection Loop podcast by Dub. Today I have with me Devin Miller and we are going to get into this idea of protecting your startup, protecting your small business, copyright, intellectual property, trademarks. There's so many things that you can do right now to protect yourself. You've worked very hard to, to come up with those creative, unique ideas and why not speak to an expert on figuring out ways to protect yourself? So, Devin, if you could please start with a short bio, and let's get into this. Oh, bios are always hard to keep short, but I'll do my best. So, <laughs> no, uh, my background, so I uh, I got four degrees, which my wife always jokes is three degrees too many, but I have electrical engineering, Mandarin Chinese, I got an MBA as well as a law degree. Um, and then within that, uh, really, I've uh, kind of pursued two things uh, as far as my career. One is I'm a full time intellectual property patent attorney, tr trademarks, copyrights, work for large law firms, started my own firm about four years ago. And then I also love startups and small businesses. And I've been uh, doing or I've done several of those, everything from a, a couple seven and eight figure businesses. Also have a few small uh, family businesses that I, I, I like to run as well. So I kind of love doing startups and small businesses and also helping people protect them. Amazing. So how did you get a master's degree in Mandarin and why? Yeah. So no, I, yeah, I'd say how was I studied a whole bunch? Why <laughs> is probably the better at, or question, which is, so I ended up serving a religious uh, mission for my church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, nick, nicknamed Mormons um, in Taiwan. So Taiwan is Mandarin speaking uh, chi or Chinese. So I was over there for a couple of years uh, serving that religious mission. And so then when I came back, um, I, at, I, I'd already started it down in the electrical engineering path. I said, Oh, if I'm already at here and I'm going to have to study or study anyway, why not just add it on as a second degree? So I added that on as uh, just, uh, just for the fun of it. Incredible. Awesome. All right. So let's get into this topic. So the, the most common use cases that I hear from, from where I sit is number one, it's some sort of a technology company or a product based company that wants to uh, get a patent, get a patent on, on something they've invented. So take us through that process. I know that there's the poor man's version, there's the rich man's version, as we might call it. Take us through that process from A to Z if we're working on something and we want to patent it. Yeah, and, and remind me to dispel poor man's version doesn't work anymore since 2013. So anybody that goes down that route, you, it was worth about the stamp that you put on it. Uh, okay, but no. it. And, that, and so that's, <laughs> that's like a, that's, we're not referring to the provisional patent. We're, we're referring to just an envelope that you send to yourself, right? Yep. That, okay. that used to kind of work and now it, it, it doesn't do you any good, but um, no, maybe this is a really quick level set. And then we'll, we'll dive into the patents just to, to give people an idea. Kind of when you hear the term intellectual property, um, it's an, an umbrella term that kind of encapsulates three different things. Patents, trademarks, copyrights. Patents go towards inventions. Trademarks go towards brands. Copyrights go towards creatives. And so definitely we can start with uh, patents. But, you know, patents can be pretty broad as far as what they can cover. I mean, it can be anything from mechanical, hardware, software. You can do food-related patents. You can do pharmaceuticals, medical devices. Really anything that has a functionality that does something um, is eligible for patents. Um, and when you're looking at saying, okay, well, what does that mean? Or how do I, so let's say that it does something you have, you created the next, you know, whatever great device, or you created some SA or a SaaS platform or something of that nature. Then the second question is, is how do you determine patentability? In other words, yes, I created something, but is it patentable? Um, and that kind of goes down to our two primary standards. And those are what is called novelty and obviousness. Novelty basically means, has anybody else previously created this? Somebody else has already created this. You can't get a patent on something that's already been invented. Second one is obviousness. Um, obviousness basically means, hey, okay, well, not one person's invented it, but if you were to take two or more things that are already out there, all you're really doing is putting them together in an obvious way. You're not adding anything new or unique. And so then again, you would uh, it wouldn't be patentable. So that's kind of the standard if you're getting started is one day create something that has functionality. Two, does it meet those two standards? If so, then you can go down the, the different paths of pursuing a patent application, um, depending on or, or, or what your circumstances for your business. That makes a lot of sense. So one of the things that, that I um, talk to people a lot about is writing a book. This could be your first book. This could be a book, a, your second book that you're working on. It can start a lot of people that I, that I speak to actually start with video. They have some sort of a recorded video series that can then culminate into, into a book. They can write it themselves. They can have a ghostwriter write it. 
what can we do to protect ourselves during the book writing process? This could be the name of the book. This could be the topics, so on and so forth. Guide us through that, please. Yeah. So books kind of fall into a, a couple potential different categories, um, depending on what kind of book you're doing and, and kind of or how that shakes out. So one is, is you can trademark a book's title, maybe. And the reason I say maybe is generally if it's just a single one-off book. So you go write a world's best-selling book, you give it a great title, you can't trademark that. And the reason being is the only trademark or trademarks are intended to be brand identifying, identifying the source of a product or service. And generally a book title doesn't identify the source of a product or service. It just identifies what the name of the book is. Now, the exception to that would be is if you are doing a book series. So if you think of Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, you know, R Jack Ryan, any of those books or, you know, pick your your book series, then the title can be trademarked because when you hear Harry Potter, you think of the whole series and all of that goes along with it. Mm. And so trademarks are kind of one area of when you're writing a book. If it's going to be a series, you can protect the brand of the series. If it's a single one off title then you are just going to go for copyrights. And copyrights are going to go towards the content of the book. So what is or if you were to take all of the text you edited, you know, you, you can also copyright the front cover of the book if it's a cool design or the back cover of the book or illustrations in the book. But really, you take all of that creative nature of any illustrations, anything that's included in the book, all of the write-up, and that's going to be under a, a copyright that you're going to protect the book with. Great. That makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. So another thing that we always get asked is I have a sales process. Mm -hmm. I've got a system that we created, right? Maybe it's called the golden goose system. Okay. Now, what is it that we can do to sort of get that? The, is it the R logo? Is it the TM on it? Is it the C with the copyright? We've developed a system. Maybe we want to. Maybe we want to title our YouTube channel on that. Maybe we want to write a book about it. Maybe we want to sell some sort of a course and make sure that no one is going to rip that, rip that, uh, that system, that process, that title off. Uh, guide us through that, please. Yeah, that's a whole big can of worms. So I'll try to guide you through as, as good as I can. But uh, you know, systems are always hard because generally people will, will come in and they'll say, "I've got this great system. I want to make sure nobody else can use this system." And the general answer is you're not able to protect a system. Now, there's exceptions. If let's say you have a software platform, it does it integrates technology, maybe something along those lines. Great, you can do that. But generally, if let's say it was a coaching system, it was a way to think about something. It was a career management system. It was a way that you can do sales. All of those, <clears throat> the system itself generally is not protectable, meaning you can't stop someone else from using that same idea or concept for the system. Now, what mm. you can protect are a couple things within that system. One okay. is you could protect the name or the brand of the system. So if you were to say the golden goose or, you know, seven habits of highly effective people, that's a system for being effective. And sometimes it's for sales and that you can protect the name and the brand that you're building. And so if people were to come along and they were to try and ride your coattail. So you put all this time, money and effort to branding the system, getting the name out there, doing webinars, seminars, videos, YouTube channels, all that. You pr you've established not just a system, but you've or established a brand around that system that you can protect under trademarks. Now, the other thing that you can do is if you were to now say the content of the system, well, you can't protect the idea and the concept. You can protect your exact implementations. And what I mean by that is if you have materials. So let's say you have unique graphics that you came up with that really describe the system uniquely and well and or convey a lot of information. Or you have specific videos that are really just, you know, great how-to videos or great walkthrough videos. Those are all protected under copyright. So you can protect those specific areas of the, create, or of the system that are creative, that are unique. But if somebody had come along and they said, I like this idea, I like this concept, I'm going to do a different brand and I'm going to do my own version mm -hmm. of it with my own materials. Unfortunately, they can do that. They just can't take the brand and they can't take your specific content. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like we should now. Now, give me your take on this, and of course, you're biased, but give us, <laughs> give me your take on some of the online services. I want to file a trademark online. I want to register something. I want to get some sort of an IP. Guide me through that process, because that's typically where most of us start. We say, oh, let me just jump over to Legal Zoom, or let me go to one of those websites where I can, you know, get a discount sort of legal service. Um, guide us through the sort of pros and cons of that, if we are 
budget conscious. Yeah, um, and you're right. I'll caveat it out of the gate. I it's a biased answer. You're asking an attorney, should you use an attorney or do it yourself? An attorney is going to say you should use an attorney. Um, <laughs> you know, the probably the simplest uh, you know example I can give is, or it, it kind of relates to your question. I'll give you my thoughts yeah. on it or expand on it. Is let's say you wanted to go, you needed shelter over your head. You okay. needed some way to get out of the weather. Right. Well, you have a few options. You can just go and try and build something without any knowledge and ever doing it before. Right. That would be your entirely your DIY option. Right. You'll have something over your head. Probably not very comfortable, not going to last very long, but you'll have something. Yeah. Second option is you could go and get a how-to book, how to build a house book. And it will walk you through the steps of how to frame the house, how to pour a foundation. And you can go through all the steps and you'll go through it. And you'll probably have something better than if you didn't have the how-to book at all. Now, there's a difference between going and hiring a contractor that has the experience. They've done the built multiple houses. They have training. They've done it for years. They know how to do electrical. They know how to do plumbing. They know how to do foundations. And that's going to give you a different quality of house. And so then, you know, if I were to take that now as the analogy, when you're looking at the DIY options for legal services, whether it's for patents, trademarks, copyrights, other things that are out there, um, you know, you have to look and see what is the quality of house I want to get. You know, what is the quality of that of protection I want? If all my budget is, is I can't even afford the legal zoom and all I want to get something in place. I want to get some shelter over my head to keep the rain off of me. Then go do it completely DIY. Do it yourself. That's the cheapest option. You know, if you're saying, Hey, I can't afford an attorney. I can't go afford a, a contractor to build my house, but I want to get something in place as I start out then legal zoom or rocket lawyer or some of the other ones aren't a bad option It's better than just doing it all by yourself, but it's not going to be the same. You're not going to have the, have it done right. It's not necessarily going to have the same level of protection. You may encounter, you know, <laughs> difficulties down the road, just like if you did the DIY option on your house and you had the book and how to, there's a reasonable chance that at some point you're going to have an electrical issue or a plumbing issue or something <laughs> else, but then you get to call the expert in and to, to come fix it. And that's kind of, I, you know, the, the perspective on the DIY or the legal zooms better than nothing, better than doing it all on your own. Right. But there's a difference in the level of quality. I, I presume in uh, Seattle, there's not a lot of sales of, uh, DIY uh, roof, <laughs> roof repair, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Um, I'm sure if you go in on Amazon and do a D, how to how to build your own roof or how to shingle your own roof, I bet there are books on it. I'd, yeah. be, I'd be willing to take it. But yeah, there, there's there's not a lot of people that are going to want to do that because it's probably not going to work out very well. Right, right. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that for me, I think it comes down to the simple, tiny little idea of time, which is that how do you value your time? Do you want to go become an expert? Do you want to do it just sort of as a baseline of quality and just say, check, I got it done? Or do you want to have the peace of mind knowing that you actually went through the process and got your trademarks, got your patents, got your copyrights, and you have that sort of metaphorical roof over your head? So I would encourage people to do your research, do what's right for you based on your budget. And just, you know, everything we do, let's just do it to the best of our abilities with the best people. And I think the other thing that I always think think about is this idea of the growth mindset, right? If we have a growth mindset, we don't feel this idea of scarcity where we have to do everything ourselves. We can actually delegate, we can invest into professionals like Devin and then go do our core competency and earn money and just keep that keep that capital rolling. So um, Devin, where can people connect with you? Give me your social channels, your website, your email, anything that makes sense for you. Yeah, I'll give a, a few different ways that they can connect and I'll, I'll caveat it with depends on how they want to connect with me or for what. So if you want to uh, connect, the primary social that I'm most active on is going to be LinkedIn. I like the you know business approach, a lot of the information on there, and I tend to be the most active there. If you want to go connect with me on LinkedIn, you can just go to meetmiller.com. Um, so M-E-E-T miller.com. Um, and that will link, take you right to my uh, my profile on LinkedIn and you can connect and make a message there. Um, second one is, is we also offer a free 15 minute consultation. So if you have questions about patents, trademarks, copyrights, you don't know what you're supposed to do, how much it's going to cost, what the process is, uh, all of those consultations, uh, we offer, Hey, here's an introductory consultation. It's not going to be all, all encompassing, but it's going to get you started. Um, and that is at strategymeeting.com. 
And the last one is if they just want to go check out our website. I mean, we have pretty comprehensive videos, a lot of materials, courses. We have a podcast of our own where we talk with a lot of inventors, a um, lot of great material. All of our flat fees are on there. Um, they can just go to uh, lawwithmiller.com. So the quick run through, want to connect on with or connect up with me on LinkedIn, go to meetmiller.com. You want to get, or grab a consultation, go to strategymeeting.com. You want to go to um, our website, go to lawwithmiller.com. There it is. Perfect. And I will give you guys a very, uh, very quick sneak peek on a uh, patent pending technology that we have here at Dub, which is called Dub Ira. And it's our AI writing assistant. And I'll just go ahead and show, show you what that looks like. So this is actually Ira right here, which is an AI writing assistant. And you can enter any number of tasks here. Select your industry, select your topic, your tone, and let's have it write a joke. Why did the inventor not get a patent? Because he couldn't think of a clever pun to put in the title of his application. Hilarious. So the technology here that we have is you can add this actually to your teleprompter. And then once you save this, you can actually go into your video recorder and that you can add your teleprompter right here. So as I'm reading this uh, script here, I can actually record the process right now. This is all developed from the, from the AI writing assistant. And the other thing that we also have as part of uh, our RIP is the ability to create a video based on text. So what I can do here is I can enter text here and then I can preview this and it's going to take it from text from text to video. And then of course I can upload this video and I can change the size of it. I can make it portrait. I can make it square. And then I can use this video on social media channels. So we are going through our own process of getting our patents for our IP. Um, the last one that I'll show you guys is actually our Cairo technology which is all you have to do is record any video using dub or even import a video. And it's going to do a nine point analysis on the video based on the dialogue. So in this case we can do, it's, it's sort of like a, it's sort of like a Toastmasters um, feedback analysis on this. We're going to tell you your cadence, how much you repeat, what are your filler words, your positivity your persuasiveness, your empathy, slang, profanity, jargon. And then within those, we're going to tell you how much you repeat it and then give you even more of a holistic analysis across all of your videos that you do so you can understand how you're developing and how you're growing and improving as a public speaker. So thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Uh, Devin, I wanted to thank you. Lawwithmiller.com. You can go get a free complimentary consult. We don't use that word free. We use the word complimentary. I wish I could, I wish I could patent that word or trademark that word. <laughs> get a complimentary consultation with Devin. And of course, you can do that at strate strategy meeting. I was going to say strategy meeting, strategymeeting.com. Thank you so much, Devin. Really hey, my pleasure. Thank you. you for having me on. Yeah.